All right, all. so today we're going to be talking about um, ecological succession, and it may be a term that you've never heard before, um, and that's fine. Before you get started, make sure you pause and go check if you have completed your attendance forms for today, and then come back to the video, and then we'll get started. So your do now is, when an otter catches a clam, cracks it open, and eats it, what type of symbiotic relationship is that? The second question, what sort of events can cause a forest to be destroyed? So think of some natural disaster type events and list them. Our learning objective for today is students will be able to compare and contrast primary versus secondary succession. And I'll get into what that means in a second. So what is ecological succession? It's the natural gradual changes in a type of species that live in an area. Um, and why would there be changes? Because something happened where there is new land where things can move into or an old habitat got destroyed and it needs to kind of rebuild. Okay, so it can be primary or secondary. It's the gradual replacement of one plant community by another over and over and over and over until there's one big stable community at the very, very end. So for primary succession, you're changing the ecosystem from scratch. So there's nothing living from where you're starting. We usually call this starting from bare rock, right? So if a new island pops up because of volcano explosion and it's just bare rock, that's primary succession, right? So if you're starting from the basic ingredients, right? If you're gonna make a cake, you're gonna start with the eggs, you're gonna use the milk, the flour, obviously there's also sugar, there's baking powder or baking soda, and there's flavorings, right? But that's all bare ingredients. Secondary succession is when you're changing an ecosystem from an existing ecosystem. So something's already there at the start. Usually we call this from the soil, right? It's a lot easier to start an environment if there's already dirt there, okay? Because there's things inside of the dirt, like there's microbiome, uh, there's a microbiome. So like bacteria and stuff is there, or there's seeds from other plants inside the soil, right? So for the example is you're making cake, but you used to get the start of the cake mix instead of just the bare ingredients. So primary succession, like we said, it begins in a place without any soil. So we usually just call that bare rock, right? So on the sides of volcanoes, if there's landslides and it's all rocks, if it's flooding and it washes away all of the dirt in an area. So the first thing that's gonna happen is that lichen are going to grow on the rocks, right? They don't need soil, they can directly grow onto rocks. And then as the lichen kind of crumble and die, they can slowly start to build into some sort of dirt. And then mosses grow onto the new dirt that the lichens made when they died, right? And mosses don't really need super, super nutritious dirt, which is why they can survive here. These are known as pioneer species, right? Because what does the word pioneer mean? Pioneer means that you're the first ones to move into an area, right? You're the first ones to kind of explore and settle into an area. So that's why we call them pioneer species because they're the first ones to kind of investigate the rock and move in onto the rock and start building an ecosystem there. So this is what a lichen looks like. It's kind of, it's a symbiotic relationship between an algae, which you usually find as the green scummy stuff in ponds, and a fungus, which is like a mushroom, right? When they work in a symbiotic relationship together, they can do photosynthesis because the algae is green and they can latch onto the rocks and absorb nutrients from the minerals because that's what the fungus can do. Here on the right side, you can see that there are moss, right? So they're really short, kind of fuzzy, almost grass-like, but very, very dense, little foamy um, chunks of uh, a kind of greenery. And they can grow on top of really, really thin and not very nutritious soil. Um, they help keep the soil down because they have roots so it doesn't get washed or blown away. And then they also help um, trap the moisture in because they're so dense. So soil starts to form as lichens and the forces of weather and erosion help break down rocks into smaller pieces. And when they die and decompose, they also add organic matter to the rocks and then that makes soil. So here you can see that um, on this little patch of rocks, stuff is being broken down. The rocks and the lichen are breaking down. And you can see that it looks different from the surrounding rocky environment that didn't kind of get inhabited by lichen. And then there's plants actually being able to grow now because they're soil present. Simple plants like mosses and ferns can grow in the new soil. Ferns are also another one. They're a little taller than mosses and they're not as flat, but they also don't need that much nutrition to grow. So they can grow on very, very poor soil. 
When the simple plants die, they add more nutrients and more organic material to the soil. And as the soil layer thickens, grasses and wildflowers and other plants can start to grow in because they need that thicker dirt to grow their roots down and hold on, right? Once they hold on, then the soil is very unlikely to erode from wind or water anymore because they're all being packed in together by the roots. As these plants die, they uh, um, add more nutrients to the soil and then shrubs and trees can survive now. So shrubs are kind of like bushes and then trees or smaller trees can grow in now because there's more nutrients in the soil so you can support larger life forms now. And then some insects, small birds and mammals start to move into the area because now there's stuff for them to eat, right? What was once bare rock now supports a variety of life. So as you can see in the primary succession model, you start from bare rock over here, and then lichens start to move in and live on top of the rocks. And as they break the rocks down and die themselves, they become a thin layer of soil. So you have small plants that grow on top of that thin soil. And then as they die, they, be, they help make the soil even thicker and more nutritious and smaller plants can grow in like grasses. And then as they die and contribute to the soil as nutrients, taller uh, plants can grow in like trees and shrubs. And then as other animals start to move in because there's now a safe and kind of protected environment for them to live in, it eventually becomes a climax community, which is the end result where it's a stable ecosystem and the types of species aren't really changing in and out anymore. It's just mainly bigger trees and ones that can compete for resources. Secondary succession, like we said, begins in a place that already has soil. So it's not bare rock, it has soil, it's that cake mix and once was the home of living organisms. So it occurs faster and has different pioneer species because you're not starting from bare rock, right? An example is after forest fires, right? All the plants get wiped out, but the dirt's still good to go. It's still there. So if you're starting from dirt, there's a quite a few less steps, right? You don't have to start with a bare rock and the lichen all the way on the left side. You're starting from grasses and things that can grow because there's already soil there. So it's actually much quicker than primary succession to return back to a climax community. Right, same picture again. So if you look, it doesn't actually take that as many years because there's a lot less steps if you look at each section of what's going on here. And here's another diagram. If you're going from the beach, which is a, a kind of sand, right? And a sand is a type of soil, although it's not very nutritious and you can grow grasses, shrubs, larger trees, and then finally, beach maple forest, which is a very stable climax community because these are very, very big trees and they take a long time to grow. Again, a climax community is a stable group of plants and animals that is the end results of the succession process. So at the end of primary and secondary, the goal is to reach a climax community. It's stable. The plants and animals that are living there are the ones that best fit the environment, right? So it's not changing dramatically anymore, right? The soil levels aren't changing, the nutrient levels aren't really changing because everything is settled and stable, okay? It doesn't always mean big trees though. When we think about this, we always think about forests and they end up in big trees. But if you think about like in the savanna and the African plains, right? There's nowhere to grow trees there, it's just long grasses. And that's the end there, right? It stays as long grasses until another big natural disaster comes through or human effect comes through. In deserts, obviously you can't grow big trees, right? You can barely even grow grasses. So you grow plants that fit in the environment and can store their own water well. And so, for example, that would be cacti, right? Those things can grow up really, really, really tall if they get enough water too. So they're almost like trees in that space. So what we do matters, right? Like I said before, natural disasters like fires, or hurricanes, floods can always impact ecosystems and cause them to have to go through the succession process. But humans also cause a huge impact, right? If you're breaking down forests and burning down forests to create farmland, right? You're destroying natural ecosystems. And that's what a lot of things, um, that's, that's a lot of times we don't consider that when we think about what we need to do to supply people with food, right? But we're also destroying the natural environment. And the whole time where you think farmers are putting down pesticides and fighting weeds and things like that, it's actually because they're fighting the natural need of the environment to grow back into a, a climax community, right? So if you burn down a forest like farmers were doing in the Amazon rainforest a year ago, they have had to keep maintaining it because they were trying to fight the effects of succession. And that's actually really bad for the environment. Not only was the burning part too, right? 
So humans also impact ecosystems and cause succession, right? If you lay down a new nice clean sheet of concrete because you're trying to build a sidewalk or build um, a house or build an apartment, right? You can notice that sometimes cracks start to form in the concrete and little weeds and grasses will start to spread out of those concrete cracks because it's succession, right? You created bare rock and now things are going to try to grow on it and to repopulate it and slowly turn it back after hundreds of years into a climax community. So I will link a video here um, in the succession um, assignment on Google Classroom in case you want an in-depth explanation with even more detail on how the process of growing uh, an ecosystem back after a disaster uh, occurs. So again, it will be linked in the assignment post if you want a more in-depth explanation. Again, so now that we have finished with the notes, please go and work on your interactive journal and finish up your um, section on ecological succession. Complete your exit ticket afterwards. Double check that you completed your attendance form and attend office hours if you have any questions to ask or any clarifications to make.